Right, this video is about my more up-to-date version of my desulfating video here. I'll put a link to it down below so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, in this video, I haven't changed the electrolyte. It's still the same electrolyte in the battery. So, the other one was Epsom salt uh, change. Uh, this one isn't. Uh, the reason for that is I wanted to do it from scratch, so to speak, and then if I didn't succeed, then I could change it over to Epsom salt and uh, see if I could uh, succeed in that way. But if I succeed with the original electrolyte, then uh, great stuff. Okay? Now, if it turns out that uh, this video is going to be too long, then what I'll do is I'll split it into two videos. Okay? Great stuff. I'm going to see if uh, this battery that Sharon gave me for a car, which uh, packed up, wouldn't turn the car over. I um, wonder if I can recover it in a similar manner that I recovered the 9-volt uh, battery recently. Um, let's see what voltage is on here first. And we'll go from there. Um, yeah, you can see that. Right. Leg to leg, pause to pause, and we have got an overload. Why have we got an overload? Oh, my meter being stupid like me. Right, 10.53 volts. Way below dead. Okay. Let's see what we can do. I'm not saying that I can do it. What I'm saying is, let's see if we can. Now, the first thing you want to do with any car battery is to get rid of all the crap. A lot of people say that, uh, oh look, I've cleaned that, it won't track. But they forget that it could track around it could track anywhere basically. So get rid of all the crud. Yeah, I know I'm in the kitchen and I know I'm getting dirt and dust everywhere, but I give it a damn good clean up before I start mucking about with food. I mean, it doesn't take long to get rid of the crud. Because at the end of the day it's only stuck on plastic. But um, it's a good thing to do a good job. I mean I'm not going to be pushing great amperage into here. It's literally going to be milliamps. Um, half an amp for the, for the push. Right, I think we can call that clean. Now the next thing we need to do is pop the cover to the cells and just check that, um, sorry if my arms are away, I'm just trying to haul this out of the, oh, blimey. Either I've gone weak or this is a little bit of a bugger to get out. Ah, oh, we're getting there. Oh, yes. Oh, we're getting there. We got there. Okay. Now, we'll put that somewhere safe for now. Says he. There. Right. Now, we have a problem because there's crud all around here. I don't know if you can see that very well. I don't want to, uh, see it's all there. Um, right, what I was doing was checking the level of the liquid on the cells and it looks fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to disturb that for now because there's no contact with the crud around here anymore. 
so I'm not worrying about shorting out. So I'm going to put the covers back on and we'll go from there. Okay, right, that's got the uh, cells protected from the uh, crud again. Okay, now I'm going to use the same uh, DC to DC converter. Well, a million of you have just gone, what? It'll blow it up! I got the current right down on my power supply. And I'm only going to up it until it starts pulling about 100 milliamps to start with. I'm not looking to charge this in 10 seconds. Right? I'm looking at char putting it over the... I've shown all this on video, what I'm doing. I'm going to put it on top of the cooker, because the cooker is defunct. It uh, don't work no more. So it's an ideal place to put it. And I'm going to leave it running. And... Um, as the current goes down, so I will inch the current up to always be around about... No, I think I'll change that. I think I might go to 250 milliamps. I think a quarter of an amp would be fine. Because uh, the Chinese rating for this, I think, is about 3 amps. So if I allow an amp and a half, amp most, I'll be quite safe with 250 milliamps. So yeah, I'll, I'll up it to 250 milliamps. Right, now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill two small holes in the top so I can get some screws in so that my crocodile clutch can uh, latch on to nice and securely without trying to get them around this big bulky um, thing. So I'll cut you loose I'll drill the holes, put the screws in, and I'll bring you back, and then we'll start playing. With you, that's it. Just wash your hands, get rid of any lead residue, and uh, if you're playing around with. Uh, Lead. Uh, you know, should really wear gloves, but um, I haven't got any uh, that I can use for this. So uh, just wash them thoroughly, and you'll be fine. Okay, right. Now I drilled the holes. Now all I need is a couple of screws. Doesn't matter whether they're long, short. Well, you don't want them to like four feet long, and you don't want them plastic, obviously. <laughs> and I just put them in until they're tight, because you just want a connection. You don't want to hang the thing on the wall. There we go. Okay, and get a couple of crop clips. Um, I use green for negative or black and uh, I use white and other colours for positive. Now then, pop that, let's do that, that should be alright now I think, stay, stay, thank you. Right, uh, positive out, negative, okay, right we've got 30 milliamps there, um, sorry you can't see can you, I do apologise, I don't know if, uh, uh, right, Turn that up until I get 
Oh, I'll leave it at that. It's going down, so it is taking a charge. This isn't uh, getting hot. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll zoom in to my power supply so you can actually watch it going down. There. It's got 5.8 volts and uh, we're dropping down and still no heat off the um, DC DC converter chip. I wish I could figure out time lapse on this uh, camera. There's nothing in the instructions about it. Um, on my original camera, which broke, uh, which Patrick's uh, trying to fix for me, um, I had time lapses, as you know, because I had uh, lots of time lapse videos on my CNC uh, series. But um, I think what I'll do is I'll turn you off, have a cup of tea, come back, and we'll see what it's gone down to. And when it's down a bit lower, I'll bring you back for a, a short while to show you. And then uh, once this gets down to about, I don't know, um, say 75 milliamps, I'll take it back up to 250 and then we'll um, carry on from there. Okay people, right, we're at 3 volts now, we're doing a quarter of an amp and that hasn't, uh, that's moved on its own and here we're charging at now 14, about 14.5 ish. Okay, now if we disconnect, I'll turn this off first. Disconnect, remembering it was 10 point something or other. We'll leave that for a few seconds. Temperature on the DC to DC converter is still stone cold. Right. Look at it positive. 12.73. Power supply is switched off. I'm amazed at that. I, I expected that to fall down to somewhere around 11-ish. But to have that very slowly falling is a big surprise to me, I, I must admit. Especially at what I've been charging at. So we'll um, keep going, see if we can get 13.8. And um, I'll just reconnect this back up for you. Switch it back on. Fourteen point three. Fourteen point four. Yeah, we'll call it 14.4. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, it looks like 
This uh, idea of mine is working. I'm, I'm not expecting it to charge the battery up uh, fully in this time. Um, but I'll leave it on overnight. And because it's now evening, um, the time is 25 past five. So uh, I'll bring you back in the morning and uh, show you what uh, we've got then.